you know, we are a really, really, and Nick can attest to this, we are a really small, um, really small school that is trying to, to find our way um, to, uh, to develop a winning tradition with, uh, with little to no help um, within the hallways. There's not a lot of athletes at our school. Um, my first year uh, at Lakewood, we had 16 varsity players and 15 JV players. Um, we lined all 31 of them up on a Friday night to make it look like we were doing something, um, <laughs> or at least had some people that could go in. Um, last year, we went from 31 to 42 players. Currently, if we were going to play tomorrow, we have 52 kids on our roster. So we're we're going in the right direction, um, but uh, we have a long way to go. But uh, just uh, just you know, that's the premise for a lot of the ideas that uh, that um, I think I'll be talking about today. Um, there's my information. Um, you can you can get that from me later if you need it or you want it after this. <laughs> so. Um, and Coach alluded to my, my tenure down in, in North Carolina. Um, I was very blessed with a lot of uh, great programs. I just happened to walk into the right doors um, from Clayton High School. Uh, we were 13-2 and two my first year down there on the varsity level, even though I was just in the box. Um, and then a uh, great tradition, uh, Millbrook High School, uh, powerhouse down there most years. And Northern Durham as well. East Wake, I got a chance to be a head coach and rebuild that program. Um, left, and they've struggled since then, um, not because of me, um, because of realignments down there. And if you know anything about North Carolina, they're always realigning. So you don't know who you're going to be playing year in and year out. Um, but uh, And I did one little one year in Alaska to coach my son in middle school. Um, and then uh, moved to Ohio, and here we are. Um, you know, as coach said, you know, we're looking at multiple blocking schemes to, uh, to keep the base run alive. Our base run is, is counter. Um, <clears throat> I've been living on counter for about 13 years now. Uh, it's, it's our horse. We, we, we ride it until, till, uh, it's, you know, the, the clock's gone and we're going to find every way we can to keep that play alive for us. Um, you know, it'll, you know, the reason that we have a lot of variations is because we think it allows us for, you know, to have quick adjustments and with 16 kids on, on the varsity, my first year, you're not talking to your kids. They're always on the field because if you guys, you know, you know, you have 16 on the, on the, the roster, there's probably at least four or five of those kids that probably shouldn't play, play football, but they're, they're, they're out there giving us everything they got, um, and we're, we're, we're pleased they're there, but, but we're not going to get a lot out of them. Um, so your 11 guys are on the field almost every play, um, and uh, you throw a couple of JVs out there on special teams to give you guys a little bit of water break, but you're not talking to them. So everything's got to be you know, rehearsed ahead of time so we can just say, hey, we want to do this now. We want to do this now. Um, within our, our line calls to adjust to the blocking. Um, so there's not a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, halftime adjustments. Um, it allows us to take advantage of the strengths of, of, our, of our offensive line and protect our weaknesses. Um, if, if we've got a kid that we know um, is going to just wear someone out all night long, we don't need um, to stay – in, in, a, uh, in a combo in, in a traditional, you know, uh, counter blocking scheme. So we'll just go a uh, wing T-ish um, with, uh, I had a wing T background in North Carolina. So we'll go, we'll go wing T and down gap backer on the front side, um, you know, as much as we can, if we think we have the personnel on that Friday night to do that. And, uh, and we'll kick and climb from the back side coming across but uh, but we won't stay in 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 a in a in a true combo if we don't need to. Um, and if you've heard Coach Salas talk about uh, combos, um, we like when we do combo, we don't like to come off early. We like to stay on it and drive them and try to wash the linebackers out if we can. Now, if we're getting you know some 
some pressure from linebackers that are flowing fast or backdooring us will come off faster and we'll, we'll talk. Um, and that's one of the things that we do with our quick communication um, through practice. So, you know, with our limited staff and limited players, communication is a huge problem um, that we've got to take care of. You know, we have a short, we had a really short half. Those of you guys in Ohio, uh, if that might be my audience today, you, we, you know, I don't know when, no one told me we had a 10 minute half. I'm like, when that first game came around, I'm like, why are we only sitting here with 10 minutes? And then, you know, small program, we're sharing players, coaches griping about, about this, coaches coach griping about that. You eat four minutes off the clock. So now the defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator are short, sharing six minutes to talk to other athletes, trying to get them back on the field for the second half. Um, so we've got to do as much up front as possible. Um, and the other thing is uh, we're, we're a real heavy RPO team. Um, Stick is one of my favorites. And um, last year, our, uh, we had a 6'4", you 6'5", know, six, six, um, prototypical quarterback that could see over the line and, and make the reads. This year, we had a really short quarterback, uh, very athletic kid, but he wasn't able to make those reads. So we had to adjust our blocking um, a little bit to try to protect his line of sight and not get a lot of pressure. One, he was a one-year quarterback playing as a senior um, because we didn't have anybody else that was uh, willing or able to play the position. So we're in a position where we've got to try to do everything up front to, uh, to put ourselves in, in, a, in a position to, to communicate quickly, get a good, a, a good adjustment, um, and practice it a lot. Um, ahead of time um, so and how do we, get, we do that we we don't overload our playbook that's the biggest thing I think anybody needs to do doesn't matter what system you're in or how loaded you are I think as coaches we get we get so caught up in 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 everybody else's playbook especially on Saturday and, and Sunday and it's a great play but does it really contribute to your playbook does it really uh, work with your personnel and and in most cases, we're struggling um, to, to find plays that work with what we have um, already. So we're not going to we're not going to introduce new ideas um, all the time. And even when they look good on on Saturday and Sunday or even the other teams that we're playing, you know, they may it, they may be able to run it against our next opponent. But it doesn't mean we can. Um, and the inside period is is where we get most of this work for 10 minutes. We do not sit there on an inside inside period and say, "Hey, we want to see exactly what we saw on film." Um, you know, you know, on Sunday's meeting and Saturday's meeting, we we're not going to sit there and go, "Hey, yeah, they're 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 always in a in a in a in a three in a shade and and you know they're they're never in this, they're never in that." You know, I tell uh, my my uh, my uh, defensive line coach who's who's helping the scout team just throw every, every var you know, variation of a four-man front that we've seen um, or every three-man front that we've seen so that we get used to the communication piece throughout the week uh, with our line calls. And, uh, and we can see if, if we're all on the same page. Now, a lot of the times I tell them this is what we call it, and then they come up with uh, generic terms that are related to um, their personality. So even if I, you know, call it something, uh, you know, when they're communicating in a game, I'll listen to them and it may not, uh, I may not even know what the hell they just called because it, it doesn't have anything to do with what, you know, what the, uh, the call is, but they've built that relationship between them where they can, uh, they can communicate and make things, uh, make things work. Um, the RPO period is another period that we do, we use um, for this, um, you know, because uh, with the stick, you know, uh, we found ourselves with the, the new emphasis this year, which I don't think really was, of linemen downfield and a, and a quarterback that didn't have the line of sight that, uh, that I've had in the past um, that we really thought, well, we've got we've to keep that backside tackle at home um, when, we're, when we're running stick to protect him from that five technique and to give him that line of sight on that on that linebacker, whichever one we were reading to do, you know to to uh, to throw the stick off of. But if we're running bubble and now screens 
off of the RPO. We don't have to worry about that, that five technique. We can run our traditional blocking. So we use that uh, 10 minute period to, to uh, work those variations as well. Um, and just to, just to throw this out there, you know, team period is when we focus on, on our, on our opponent and what we've seen on film, but, but inside zone or inside run period and RPO period, we're focusing on the variations that we could see. And for that matter, you know, I think four times this year, we lined up on Friday night against a different, against a different uh, team than, than, than we saw on film. You know, they were a 3-4 team, but now th tonight they're a 4-2. Uh, they're a 4-2. Tonight they're, they're a 3-3 three, three stack. So we had a lot of issues this year where the team came out that we were playing and they decided to run a different defense than, than we saw on film and their traditional, their traditional fronts from any time that we've, we've played them in the past. Okay, so, um, and I don't know what's going on with the screen, but we'll keep going ahead. This is our base blocking. It's no surprise to anybody. Um, the only difference here might be, are you climbing to the front side linebacker or the backside linebacker? Um, but uh, we, we're we going to, like I said, we're going to try to wash this front side three technique vertical and stay on him and try to make this linebacker have to bounce over top of us instead of coming off of this, this block as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> you know, our center was really good at, at uh, blocking back. And we're going to get the kick and climb from from uh, from the the backside guard kicking the backside tackle uh, wrapping. We we would have um, some type of RPO on the backside. Uh, we may be running uh, mirrored RPOs. Uh, we may be running an RPO on the on the backside in in double hitches on the front side. Um, it all uh, is in in that you know. For that matter, that's what our quarterback can handle. And this year, our quarterback was so raw. Um, and it's a quarterback-driven offense, but he, he could not handle all the variations and all the variables mentally to, to, you know, to focus on, um, am I getting a now screen on the back side? And am I getting hitches on the front side? So we just mirrored in the, at the end of the year, we, we took that that variation off of off of his plate because he wasn't handling it. So you may see some film where we're we're doing different things on front and back side. Um, that could be last year's film or it could be early this year's this year's film. But but we got away from that because he wasn't handling it very well. Now the the first thing that we will do, and this is this is I think anybody um, has done this in the past, but um, if we get a linebacker walking up if this linebacker decided he wanted to walk up in this a gap you know you're getting an uno a solo call something that's telling this tackle that you can't help him at the guard position because you have someone threatening your gap um, so we've used uno solo and other variations of calls to to alert him to that um, i may tell them that we're going to uno front side um, for this friday night because whoever this three technique is not going to get it done. We know that we have an advantage here. So we're going to down block on this guy all night long and drive him. And we're going to let this, this tackle or this guard have a, have a, a good run at this, at this uh, backside linebacker and get him early instead of having to come off of that combo. Um, <clears throat> now for RPOing, uh, we would tell that guy to, 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 to stay on this, you know, more traditional combo where he's going to hit and then climb to allow the downfield RPO to uh, take, take place. And if we're doing a, a now screen or a bubble screen, he's climbing right now because we know the throw is going to be behind the line of scrimmage. So that's one variation that we will do in order to take advantage of our personnel versus someone else's personnel. Now, if this guy's a horse, if this three techniques a horse, we're staying on him and we're, we're getting as much out of this this combo as we can to try to create space on this. Okay, on uh, the um, if we had an uh, if we had an underfront, you know, this is not my my personal favorite way to block this. I know if you're you're um, 
a lot of people, including, you know, friends of mine that run this, you know, down in North Carolina that uh, just, they're like, oh, hey, your center can make this, your center can block back on this, this uh, three technique. Um, it, it's a block he should be able to make. Well, I've had centers that couldn't make that block. Um, they were shielders. They weren't, uh, they weren't very agile. I was lucky for them to block people in the A gap. I know they're not going to go get the three technique, and they sure as heck won't get that four eye. Um, so, um, but this is how we would try to block it if we know that we have a center, which I had had this the last two years at, at Lakewood at a pretty good center. You know, he's been offered D two um, scholarships, so he's he's fairly fairly uh, athletic, um, but. You know he could go. He could go make that block. But there are times when we're playing teams like, you know, Licking Valley, where they've got a they've got a kid that just shoots the gap, and and there's no way we're getting back there. We may if we were if he was lined up on us, it would be an it would be a good good battle. But if he's that far away, this guy's too quick for us to make that block. So now we would go to, you know, a dart. Um, if you've heard me talk before. Um, you know, I, I, I really like the dart, the dart off of this. At least that's what we call it in North Carolina. Tackle trap um, is another, you know, way of calling it. But uh, so we, if we get a dart call from the center, the center's a communicator. We get a dart call from the, the, from the center. This guard knows he's, he's blocking back on this three technique. And we're going to get a combo to the backside um, from the center and the front side guard. Um, here um, and we'll play games with this front side five depending on his his ability level what he likes to do um, versus what this this tackle is capable of doing uh, we made a really big mistake in my mind um, this year with our with our right tackle um, asking him to go get linebackers um, about halfway through the season his his right knee was just on fire and we we didn't adjust fast enough to his ability um, and, and limit his uh, his going to get linebackers instead of just blocking someone that's on him. So um, if we have if we have an advantage here um, based on technique or personnel, we'll block out. Same thing, you know, if we have a linebacker walk up here, we'll block down and that tackle will kick the five instead of wrapping up. This is how we prefer to run it because our tackle is used to the wrap. So we want to keep his, his uh, block is as similar, you know, as much as possible. And we all base block. So this is not a big deal for the, for the tackle in most cases. Um, so this is how we will, we'll, we'll run our dart um, to keep the counter going. Uh, if they want to run an under front to try to, uh, to mess with our blocking or, uh, you know, well, they, you know, um, or we could run QB counter back to the three technique if we really wanted to. Now, this is what I was talking about here. We don't have to wait for this, this linebacker to walk up in order for us to go get him. If this guy's a climber, if he likes to go flying up the upfield um, and get himself in harm's way, then we're not gonna, we're not gonna base him. We're gonna go ahead and climb here, get on that linebacker and let the tackle take him late, um, you know, and get up underneath him anyway. So we're not going to, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to base block that guy um, all the time uh, in that case, especially if this linebacker on that particular Friday night is someone that even from five yards loves to trigger. Uh, we want to go ahead and get that, that tackle on him early instead of having a kick and a trap in the hole. We want to go ahead and take that linebacker now and, and take that five technique and get up underneath it. And we're still blocking back on that, uh, on that three technique with the guard with that dark call. Um, <clears throat> and this is just if we had an Uno, again, um, with the dark call, you know, we get a linebacker pressing, pressing that backside A. The center's got to let this guard know that he's not going to get any help because the linebackers already show themselves. And I try to preach to my offensive line that this is a welcome situation. We, you know, a lot of offensive linemen start panicking when linebackers step up. And when I played offensive line, I just felt like you just, you just brought yourself into my world um, and I'm about to whip you. You know, 
at five yards, you have the advantage because I'm in space. Okay, but when you walk uh, one and a half yards off or you're right on the line of scrimmage, you're in my world now. And I try to preach to my, my offense lineman, you've got to have that mentality that you just, you just entered the wrong house. You know, this is my house. I'm about to whip you because you came through the wrong front door. You know, at five yards, now, now he has the athletic advantage on most Friday nights. But if we did have, <clears throat> if we did have that, uh, that linebacker stepping up, heavy blitz team, we would, we would call Dart because we, because we want to, to get to this guy and not trap him whole. So we'll, we'll just tackle, trap that five technique. Whether he's a climber or a squeezer, it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and, and get up to that second level and root that five technique out. And here's one thing that uh, I don't know that a lot of people are doing. In fact, I didn't do it until, until last year, and I didn't do it a lot last year. did it a lot more this year, and that was pull my center. Um, so, and we called, it a, we called it a concrete call, um, you know, based on a, uh, a, an ice cream drink. Um, they, they, they came up with that them on their own. So, um, so whatever, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what the call origin, you know, or, in, or it comes from as long as they're on the same page, but the center is going to pull on the concrete. So he's going to call concrete to let that guard know, just like on dart, you're blocking back. Okay. But we're still trying to keep the center, um, in that block. Um, you know, so he's, he's going to, he's going to kick here, um, and I don't know why I drew this up this way. This tackle would still pull and, and fold up here. So uh, forget that right there. So this tackle would pull and fold up onto this front side, front side uh, linebacker. But we're going to pull to kick that, that four technique or five technique on the front side with the center. We won't do that a lot, um, especially in a four-man front. Um, if we were going to do this as it's drawn up, um, it's going to be more um, because we're trying to run a, a stick behind this linebacker right here, and we want to keep that five technique blocked instead of leaving him alone. And the, what we would do there, and I'll show it to you later, is, is we would actually lead with this, this running back and run the quarterback through on the counter. Um, and I'll get to that one in just a second so you can see that. But this is more – uh, a three-man call for us um, because of the four eyes. I, you know, I used to run a three-four down in, in North Carolina. Uh, on you know, when I was the head coach, that's one of the the defenses, the, the defense that we ran, and we loved to run four eyes to protect those linebackers um, and and mess with people's blocking. So one of the things that we decided, you know, this was a good time for us to concrete. We don't need a combo. Uh, we don't need a combo here. To, to backside linebacker, we're gonna we're gonna down block here. Um, we're gonna kick this this uh, this ghost that's walked up here. We're gonna down block on this this four eye here, and we're gonna wrap up on that front side linebacker and and play games with this guy right here. We will run a lot of stick versus this front, um, you know, to 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 really put pressure on this linebacker. Do you want to be a run supporter? Do you want to be a you know, pass support? And our, our quarterback has got a great line of vision on that um, with, with that clean, clean line of sight right here. So even if he, even if he triggers, we're running a stick behind this. Um, so, uh, you know, the safety would have to be the guy making that play or this, uh, this ghost riding him through, and then we would have, we would have a square in a five yard square and trying to take advantage of this guy leaving that space and that safety playing too high. So um, those are some things that we would do out of, out of that front. Now um, the other thing is, is using the H counter. Um, you know, we were not blessed with, uh, with a great H situation this year. We didn't have really uh, ISO was there all, all day. As, as it is on a lot of Friday nights, but we didn't have a running back that was willing to man up and block for anybody. Um, they, didn't, they didn't mind running the ball, but they sure as hell didn't, they didn't want to block. Um, and, you know, un unfortunately, we don't have a stable that's, that's deep enough for us to say, well, if you're not blocking, you're not running. Um, so, you know, we, 
You know, we tried to uh, figure out other ways by putting offensive linemen in this position, um, tight ends. Um, even the guys that we thought we could count on were not very good for us in this in this role. So we didn't run it very much this year, um, even though it, it is a great concept. And I'm sure a lot of you guys run it. Um, so, but we're just gonna we're gonna block back on on this guy. Uh, again, this is another another way of us getting getting our stick in. So we can block back on this backside five. We can run our stick, <clears throat> and we still have the kick and the climb in our, in our counter that we really want to have. Um, you, know, you do bring someone else into the box, and that's what a lot of air raid guys can't stand is another guy in the box. But sometimes you got to look at it whether well, the guy's already in the box. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you bring one in or not. They're already, they're already outmanning you anyway, especially at Lakewood where our receivers aren't good enough to, to eliminate people from the box. A lot of the, a lot of people will man us up or, or at least um, play two man and, and, uh, and their athletes are better than ours. So they've already, they've already decided that they won that matchup and they'll introduce other people to the box to, uh, to try to help on our counter. <clears throat> Okay, so here's what I was talking about earlier. You know, uh, one of the, and this is one of the things, you won't see this on film. Uh, we did this down in North Carolina quite a bit. Uh, we ran a lot of follow. Um, and this, uh, this is a little bit of a variation. When we ran follow down in North Carolina, again, we had a really good quarterback that was able to make um, really good players miss. You know, he he threw for 2,500 yards, the last quarterback that I had at, the, at East Wake down in North Carolina, and he ran for almost 1,000. He was very elusive, you know, went played at North Fork State. Um, you know, I mean, most of the quarterbacks I had down in North Carolina were the same caliber athlete. I was blessed with a lot of Division I quarterbacks down there, um, and they weren't just – they weren't throwing quarterbacks. They were dual-threat quarterbacks. Um, so uh, we were able to do a lot of this stuff and make people miss, even when it, it wasn't the perfect call. So, but, you know, at, at Lakewood, we're going to have to keep this guy back and block that five technique and let this guy be the, the, the lone lead. You know, we used to bring this guy around and, and fold up and introduce the running back into that that hole and that guy would sit and wait because he was afraid to commit because as soon as he committed, our, our, our quarterback was out the back door and, and up the sideline. You know, we don't have that luxury um, at Lakewood. So now we've got to count for this guy. So we're not really losing out because now we've got the block here. We're putting pressure on this, this linebacker. We still have the, the stick read that we want. If he commits to the run, we're, we're throwing it right behind him. If he commits to, to staying on the pass, <clears throat> we're folding up, and we've got numbers advantage on front side. So those are the things that I uh, that, uh, wanted to show you on, and I, and I hope I didn't go too fast, but I, I know it's limited time. But uh, those are some of the things I wanted to show you on, on, the, uh, on the board anyway. And then, uh, you know, I want to get to, you know, you can see that my, my front, my backside guard is not the most explosive guy here. He trots instead of firing out, and he's not trying to run anybody over. Um, he gets better as, as the year goes on, but, you know, he still keeps 77 out of there. You know, we climb and get to the linebacker, but this is just your, your traditional, you know, um, counter. You know, no, no, uh, no real variations there. You know, we're going to combo that. And you can see we're not coming off of that combo. We're trying to, we're trying to stay, stay on him. He spins out, but we're not looking to climb real fast there. I'm not going to show you the end zone view there, but um, – Again, and I told you that this right tackle is he's uh, he's not exactly on on, on two legs right now. Um, he's on one and a half and you can see him galloping, but still just the concept of the play. We're getting the 
getting the wash down that we want there on front side. Okay, front side guard needs to do a better job of getting to that linebacker, but he gets on him enough. Get up underneath it. Um, you know, explosive play against a team that was uh, fairly limited athletically versus us, and we're not gifted. So that's that's saying a lot, you know, when you're talking about personnel. Um, but uh, so this is just a, again another base base blocking of our of our our uh, our counter. I didn't know we had this much on against them. Getting a little good cut back there. Um, he gets walked, unfortunately. Our fastest guy on our team last year was running a 4940. Um, so that tells you a lot about our speed. You know, we we were not fast. We had a few four lines, but no one was running into that. Try to get this thing out of my way. Okay. I swear this thing's always in my line of sight. So here you see we're running our concrete. Uh, we're getting the, the center is pulling front side on the kick. Tackles coming up in the hole. Okay, we have an advantage over this 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 group here. Um, you know, our center has the has at least this year. Next year will be a completely different story. Our center is telling this guard, you know, I can't get back to this guy, even though I I know he could have athletically done it. Um, but he wants, you know, unfortunately, you give somebody a. a a toy and then he likes to play with it. And, uh, and our center got to the point where he really liked, liked to call his own number um, and pull when, when, it was, when he was allowed to. So he's telling this guard block back, you know, we're gonna be reading this five technique and we're blocking down on this, on this heavy shade, okay? And we should be, should be climbing to that front side linebacker. We should be going to back side linebacker here. So anytime we're running a dart um, concept, we're not going to backside. We should be going to front side linebacker. Um, but I know a lot of times that's not exactly who we end up getting because of blitzes and things of that nature. But we just happen to there. And the backside linebacker gets, you know, washed up a little bit and he's slow as hell. Again, Trace is calling his own number, um, calling for the concrete, even though this is a four-man front. Um, he's pulling out. He's not hammering that guy the way I would want, want him to. I mean, he's a D2, you know, he'll sign a D2 scholarship, so they're going to do a lot of work with him. You know, um, four years ago, he could barely run. run. Now, he's, now he's signing a Division II scholarship, so he's made a lot of gains over, over four years. Um, so expect a lot, a lot of growth of him in, in college as well. He's he's six five, so I don't know if he'll be playing center or not. But get a good, good contact there from front side guard. Not a not, didn't get his head across and still still the penetration the way I want, but still not bad. Okay, and this tackle, you know, I've talked to you about his galloping, but uh, he should actually be. Since we have a dart concept, so when we call concrete or dart, this tackle should be going here and not there. Um, you know, so, but, uh, but he, he ends up doing much of nothing, but uh, the play still goes.
you know, here's uh, Licking Valley. You know, they were state state play champ or state uh, runners up last year. This year they had a good run again. Uh, I think they only lost two games. You know, so they've got they've got some really talented kids here. You know, Trace again. You know, like I said, he got a toy. Now he's playing with it. Um, you know, this this three technique is not that far away from him that Trace couldn't have uh, blocked back. Um, but in retrospect, he's the better athlete than my guard is. Uh, if you've seen that on film, you, sh you should already know that. So this is definitely something I'm not going to, you know, I didn't tell, obviously he keeps doing it, so I didn't tell him to stop um, because he actually makes the block where uh, my backside guard here on the, my left guard is more prone to, you know, seeing the guy and getting his hands on him instead of having any type of real collision. Um, so I don't mind this at all, but I, I would rather have, have have a guard in this situation where we have a three technique that's uh, not someone that's just shooting off the ball and someone that's penetrating that we can't get back to. Okay, um, so if your center is able to get back to that three technique, that's definitely the way to go. Um, but uh, if, if, again, if you have a, an athletic disadvantage, then, you know, um, call, the, call the dart and get the combo here. I'd rather see the combo here to backside than what he's calling, which he's calling a concrete. Um, so I'd rather have that combo here, especially against, against Lake or Licking Valley, where they, they have – they may not be the biggest defensive line, but they are sound. They come off the ball and they, they just pin the ears back and, and try to blow you up. So, you know, if, if, if I were going to be the, the center here, I would have called for a dart and kept the combo here on the front side to backside backer and had this guard come kick the five okay, and told this tackle right here, go get that linebacker right now. And, uh, and, we may have had more room for this run than than what we have here in this case. It's a it's a really tight hole. We still get five or six yards out of it, but uh, just looking at what we could have had versus what we got, um, and we had our quarterback was was fairly athletic, good runner. Unfortunately, you know, he he had turnover issues, but uh, but he he did run the ball fairly hard for us. And here's the dart, um, I believe. I don't think I just – nope. He called, he called the concrete again. So, again, I would rather have the dart um, in this situation unless this guy's a, a – a, we get a good get – I guess he was a three on that side. So, we get a good combo here to backside, even though he doesn't get blocked. He gets washed, has to run flat instead of downhill. Um, so we get a good get a good movement. We get good movement on the front side, okay. And you know my backside tackle does a good job getting there, but he's not staying on his block. Obviously, those things you know add yardage to the play. You know Trace does a good job of washing that guy up, even though he sees him early. I wish I could say we did that all night long, but it didn't happen that way. <laughs> and just a base uh, base um, counter here against a team that uh, really exploded um, in the in the late late season, especially playoffs. They they actually were beating Licking Valley in uh, in the second or third round. Um, up until the last second of the game, I believe it was. Um, even though they started off really bad, they uh, they they ended up having a good run, um, and they pounded us um, offensively. You know, we didn't see the ball very much that night, and when we did, we turned it over. I think we started the game with three, uh, two fumbles and a and a and a pick six on our first three drives against this team. You know, 
another, you know, just, uh, you know, offensive line guys, you're probably saying, thinking the same. The, this guard has got to press the line and get underneath. This five, he's getting too flat. He's allowing the guy to cross his face. I don't know how many guys you're, you're seeing wrong arming. Uh, we don't see a lot of wrong arm, but hell, they don't have to here because we're allowing it to happen. You know, we've got to get back into the line of scrimmage, you know, and, and make this guy work to make this play. Uh, we just happened to get a little bump here, drop here, and the uh, you know, running back got through the trash. I think if he cuts that thing back against the grain there, he's, he's running up the middle of the field. Still got a good surge on a, on a third and long here. Um, you know, playing field position, which we don't, we don't play a lot. We had a hell of a punter, um, but uh, would rather be playing for first downs than, than field position. <clears throat> Yeah, double A's here, wash them down. And that's the one thing that we practice in, you know, all the time is, you know, we've seen so, so many different uh, fronts, especially, I don't know if any of you guys have played um, leaking heights. Uh, they haven't uh, won a lot of games the last couple of years, but they, they have some really talented you know, personnel, and they will line up in any front in the world. Um, so, you know, we practice against, you know, crazy crap um, just so our offensive line have to communicate and figure the puzzle out um, during inside run. So uh, not that double A's is a big thing, uh, but we've, you know, we'll see teams bounce into to two th to double threes and try to plug with the linebackers and, you know, the, the, the linemen have got to communicate and solve that puzzle puzzle on the fly. We don't run as fast an offense as as I did in North Carolina because we don't have the personnel to run into the ground. Um, you know, so if we're trying to run anybody to the ground, we're going to run ourselves into the ground. So we we play a lot a lot more methodical than than I really want to, but uh, just asking them to solve the puzzle. And, and get things done in practice allows them to adjust to, to fronts that we don't see every, every day. I'm gonna try to get to something that may uh, be you know, something we haven't seen yet. And we we had our we had our moments um, where we we did things really well, but uh, our biggest problem was turnovers this year with a quarterback that had never played quarterback, just happened to be an athlete that was willing to take the, you know, take the pounding. Um, he was, he's probably a division, you know, uh, I will say D3 um, receiver, but, um, you know, he decided to help the team out instead of himself out and took the, took the ball. Um, and he got, he got ridiculed all the time because of turnovers, but no one else was willing to take the ball. Um, and he, he, uh, he stood up and did it. So kudos to him to, you know, you know, put uh, potential college prospects, you know, you know, in the back, back seat, put the, the team first.
me see where I'm. Again, just a little eye candy. I think we we all know how that works uh, with the linebackers telling them, you know, keep your eyes on your on your your line reads. And then and going back to that, you know, the 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 line reads. The you know the, the one thing that I do like about the concrete um, is it it screws with those line reads. Um, your your linebackers aren't accustomed to reading that center pulling. Um, so you know. There's times when I watch film and, and you you see the uh, the linebackers you know reacting um, to to the guards thinking that that down block means this or that you know that base block on the backside means that you know they're they're taking steps in the wrong direction but we're running counter um, with not any true counter action in the backfield all the time or most of the time for that matter um, but we still get wrong wrong steps because we're pulling that center. Um, you know, if you're willing to do that like I am and run sticks behind that, that backside linebacker and tell him, well, if you feel I'm throwing uh, right behind you, I, th I think it's something that you, you might want to think about um, doing. I, I had my reservations initially as well, um, you know, but, you know, once I saw that, you know, it, it's, it's a – it's it's still you know this linebacker has got to make that play, you know he he's got to be coming like a, a banshee to get to my quarterback before we get to that sticks you know behind him for that for that center you know that that backside a being open um, to make us feel like we're that vulnerable that we can't do it so he's got to he's got to time that thing up perfectly um, and. You know, and we're not doing that that center pull all the time, so they don't know um, when we're doing it unless they get they catch on to our, our terminology up front. But I tell my my offense linemen all the time this as well is is you've got to communicate false false calls as much as you can, so the offense the offense line isn't giving the defensive line a tell. So we try and we practice that in practice as well. We, you know, and I and I try to listen to them as much as possible to see if, if they're making the line calls or if they're not. If I hear them calling concrete, if that's the call, and it is, it was for us last year. If I hear them calling concrete, 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 every time we do it, I'm going to ride them hard. They've got to understand that I've got to hear that call. When we're running sprint game to the right or sprint game to the left, when that call has absolutely nothing to do with what we're doing, so the, the defensive line isn't honing in on when it's going to happen. So that's another big thing. If you're going to talk a lot up front um, and give your, your offensive line the ability to, to manipulate the blocking schemes the way we do, um, then you, you've got to teach them to, 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 to give false information out as much as possible so that there, there isn't a tell. Um, they don't know when we're going to run dart. They don't know when we're going to run concrete. They don't know when we're going to run our base blocking. Um, and unless we just say it every time, it's going to happen. So we try to stay away from that as much as possible in practice so that it shows up on Friday night just like anything else. Try. All right, so we've got a three-man front here. I wanted to get to this three-man front just to just to see it. Now, Trace is out. He folds up. Um, you know, we we got the the tackle um, blocking this uh, this five technique. And the reason we did that it was because uh, because of his legs. We didn't want him chasing the linebackers. Um, because he wasn't able to do that, but if he could get on someone early, uh, we felt like we had a we had a chance to to uh, to at least keep keep him on the field. He was one of our senior leaders. Um, he was actually um, all 
you know, second team all conference last year. He didn't even make make honorable mention this year because he had so many injuries. Um, but you know, we were able to keep him alive on this play, kick that five, and then uh, turn turn the center up and the the, the backside tackle. Back to more traditional, you know, base blocking. You know, the the tackle here again. This is he. We we asked him to stay on that that defensive end um, because of his legs. He was able to get into that tackle and wash him down, even though he's a five ten. He he does slant across his face, but if our tackle is doing what he's supposed to do, I would want him to get underneath that slant. Um, unless that guy's just hell bent on crossing his face, which it doesn't look like he is. But you know, in this case, we we wanted uh, wanted our tackle to stay in that five um, because we're trying to take advantage of what he could give us. Now, if we get a little bit more on this backside linebacker, um, and this is one of those things when you're when you're telling your guys to stay on this this combo and just try to wash linebackers out, you know, every now and then you get that ten yard run um, where you, if you come if you came off and you pinned him, you might have hit a home run. Um, you know, that's you know that's one of those things you're you're. You know, what do you, what do you want to get, you know, and we want to stay on that combo as much as possible and try to drive that guy so that linebacker has got to really bounce over top or come underneath um, and, and get himself in bad situation. This guy, you know, found him, found his, his, uh, his tackle, you know, 15 yards down the field. So we're, we're still happy about that result. And here's dart. <clears throat> we ran a lot more dart last year than we did this year. Um, you know, so you won't see the center pull. He's blocking back on that three technique. So this is actually traditional, you know, kick and climb um, because our center decided that he was able to get this. This is, and I've talked about this before, this guy right here is pretty good, and he's – I don't know what year he was this year, but he – you know, he's pretty good, but Trace was able to get back on him. Um, if we had – and this was game planning. If we had number 26 lined up here, we would have gotten a dart call because 26 would just explode. If anybody played against Licking Valley, you know um, – I, I, I'm forgetting his name, but he's just a – he's just a horse. He's probably the best defensive player that – you know, the last two years on our conference just just created havoc on on uh, on on all the offensive linemen and off, offensive line in our in our conference the last two years. So that we were able to to run a traditional you know counter there, get back on that three because of personnel. Um, but later on, you know, we'll we'll change that because 26 is in the game. Now we've got Dart here. Um, and I again, I think we could have uh, we could have very well against this team personnel run it traditional instead of uh, running dart because of personnel's personnel issues that they have, not us. Now here's one that I was talking about. Uh, this is actually I think Watkins Memorial. Uh, they they came and they were running two man fronts. Um, with uh, with the you know trying to cover everybody up, 
you know, play high up for whatever reason. Like I said, our best 40 uh, was a 4-9. Um, and uh, we had one kid this year that ran a 4-6, but he'd never played football before, and he wasn't out there. You know, so 4-9, and you got a guy 15 yards off the ball. Um, so for whatever reason, they showed up in the front, and, and again, the expectation is solve the puzzle and let's get some yardage. So, and I don't know if you can tell there, they're in two threes. They're in two threes. So we're going to get a front side combo to the linebacker. We're going to get the, the backside guard is going to block back on the three. And we're going to be running dart here. He turns up in the first hole that he sees. The running back follows, follows the, the tackle through. We almost, uh, we almost hit a, you know, explosive, well, that's an explosive play, but. We almost put it in the end zone on on this, you know, bastard front. Um, and uh, you look at the uh, the down and distance. I don't know if it's sec. What is it? Um, uh, whatever it is, um, second and thirty. Um, and this is what they line up in, and 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 we we pound them on it. Coach, you get about three or four minutes. Okay. And we ended up winning this game in overtime, which was a blessing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and stop watching film. If anybody has any questions, I, I'm more than willing to answer if I, if I have that uh, ability. <laughs> um, hopefully you got something out of this. The biggest thing um, is don't, don't think you have to do, you know, what everybody says is it, it, it's, you know, I we got a we got a uh, a new coach on our staff, and I love him. Um, but he walks in, and that ain't counter. So it doesn't matter what the hell it is. Our kids call it counter <laughs> because I'm telling them it's counter. That ain't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to fall into this this you know envelope that you call counter. It, it's we're we're trying to put our kids in the best situation to win a football game and have success on a Friday night. Lakewood was one in 39 um, the last three, four years before I got here. Um, and we've, we haven't won a lot of games, but we're six in, we're six in 14. <laughs> so we're heading the right direction. Um, you know, so, you know, and I think counter has got a lot to do with it, you know, and, um, you know, and all the things that we do off of our counter as far as the RPOs, the backfield actions that we'll do, um, the two back sets, the motions um, that, that we introduce as well. So thank you, guys.